Hello, this is Mariana Luna from Tipco Jaspersoft. Today we're going to have a look at the authentication methods that the Visualize.js framework provides. Visualize.js is a new API and JavaScript framework that allows you to embed visualization from Jasper Report Server into your web application. Looking at how can you load the framework into your web application, then move into the authentication options that you have, so how you can authenticate to the backend Jasper Report Server, and then a couple of other elements that are really useful, like sharing configuration settings between calls and how to manage the session from your Visualize.js framework uh, to your Jasper Report Server in the backend. Let's start from the beginning. How do we load this framework inside our web application or web page? So essentially, Jasper Report Server through Visualize.js provides you with a pure JavaScript library that enables to manipulate reports, visualizations and, uh, from the server and insert them in the DOM of your page. Jasper Report Server will be working in the backend, rendering and generating the visualization and reports, and the client will, allows you, will allow you to uh, call specific methods to retrieve report units, go through the repository, and insert those into your page uh, inside your web application. The call initially is pretty straightforward. For this example, let's imagine that I have installed my Jasper report server in the domain bi.example.com. So if I wanted to call and initialize the library, just from uh, the header page of my web application, I'll just call to the initialization script of Visualize.js, which is in client Visualize.js, and that will give me the uh, initial visualize object so I can start working with it. Let's look a little bit deeper into what that call. Of course, it's a get method. The content type of that is pure JavaScript, so it's application JavaScript. And the idea is that through the initial request, I can pass certain parameters that allows me to uh, manage the behavior of the visualizations that I generate in Jasper. Some of those parameters are, of course, the user locale, which will accept any Jasper report server locale. So if you have reports that you're using internationalization, you can just specify the locale in the initial call, and all the reports will actually be rendering on that particular locale. The other two options are regarding logging. So if you want to enable or disable logging, and what type of log level are you going to use. The logs are written in the console log of your application, in the JavaScript console log. It's a best practice that you turn off the logging when you're moving your application into production. That way you're not writing things in the log of the JavaScript console, which is running at the client side. Now let's move into the authentication. So you have three different options of, for authentication to the backend Jasper report server through Visualize.js. The first one, it's a very useful just when you're doing POCs or testing the library, working with fiddles, because it's a plain text authentication. Since all the credentials are actually stored in your script and sent over the wire in plain text, this method is very insecure and should not never be used in production. For production, you have to be using any type of single sign-on that you have set up from your Jasper server. You can log in using a token, which is a very common method and it's very secure. That token can be a token from the Jasper server single sign-on API, new in 5.6, or any third-party frameworks that you have uh, set up and configured in your Jasper report server. Those can be CAS or SAML or any other uh, SSO method that you have, including custom SSOs. In those cases, you will be generating that token from your application or calling the third-party framework to get the token and pass that token into your initialization of the library. The third method is actually using hooks. These provide a more customized way to generate and invoke probably login or logout URLs that you need to use to uh, receive the credentials that the Jasper server will be using. I'll focus this video on the first two and I'll leave you uh, to check on the documentation for what are the, all the options that you have using hooks. There's actually a fourth method that I want to mention here. In the case that your application already is embedding Jasper Report Server and you're handling the authentication uh, from a third-party method and you know that your user is already authenticated to the backend Jasper Server and to your application, you can use Visualize.js 
and pass an empty or dummy method uh, for authentication. And since the session is already in place, Visualize will actually return the Jasper report client that you can use. OK, let's go into plain text. This method, as I said, is really useful when you're playing with the library and working and doing tests, especially when you're using jfiddle or in your code. You will see that the fiddles that we show, actually all of them use this authentication method. So it's easy for you to just tailor them to use your own Jasper server instance. This method is pretty straightforward. When you call the visualize object, you provide an authentication object, the auth object you see here, which is a JSON document that has the username that you want to log in, the password, and the organization if you're using a multi-tenant environment. As I said before, you can see that the password is actually passed in plain text, and that's why this method should not be used in production. The fiddle that I have here, and we'll see in a minute, it's a very simple one. I authenticate as Joe user and have two alerts if actually I have an error in the authentication or if the user was authenticated properly and the Jasper server client B object was returned uh, to your user. Now let's look a little bit more deep into the token authentication method. In this method, as we said before, you will be using a single sign-on mechanism. That can be either a third-party SSO, or it can be the Jasper Report Server built-in token SSO API. Uh, I will recommend you to check the Jasper Report Server authentication cookbook, which is in our documentation, that provides all the methods for third-party uh, and internal APIs for authentication. This is the recommended method to embedding the library when you're using this in a production environment. It's very secure, and you are not exposing the credentials of the user inside your code or any time while the calls are being made to the server. Of course, Jasper Report Server has to be configured to understand the authentication method and be able to manage what uh, it has to do with that particular token. As you see, the initialization is pretty similar to the one before. But in my auth object, instead of passing a username and password, I'm just using the token uh, uh, method and passing my token. This is actually what we'll see in the fiddle. But eventually, in your application, this code token will be generated programmatically. So this type of code normally will be generated for each particular user session. You may be using your session to actually store the token or have that generated on the fly. You will notice at the end of the video, we have a way of having this uh, uh, Visualize.js configuration in a single place. So it will make easier to uh, generate those things uh, programmatically from your application. OK. So now that we have seen uh, a different type of authentication methods, let's look at what we can do to uh, have those uh, configuration settings in just one place. This will allow us to uh, have a more clean code and have uh, only one place where we are actually setting up the credentials for the user. If you look at the, the code I have in the screen, I'm actually creating the auth object uh, in a variable called my config. And I'm using plain text authentication. Any authentication methods that we uh, discuss can use these actually uh, these common settings uh, for your calls. So if you think about it, this object that now I'm actually putting in the variable can come from an Ajax call, can come from any place that you can retrieve the JSON object that includes your authentication settings. Then later in the code, you will use the config uh, method of visualize to actually uh, Tell Visualize.js which configuration settings will you be using. And then later in your call, you can just call the Visualize uh, function without any authentication, and it will, will be using the centralized config. In this case, I'm just rendering a report. Now let's move to a little bit of session management. 
As you know, Jasper Report Server will handle the sessions for you. So when you initialize the library with a particular user and start using that from your web application, you will be reusing that session for rendering any type of reports that you want through throughout the process. There are cases where you will want to finish that session for the user, either because the user logs out of your application or because your code actually needs to finish that session for uh, other purposes. Visualize.js provides logouts and login functionalities that you can use to man manage the session in the Visualize library against the backend Jasper report server. The code in the screen and the field that we'll see is a very simple way to handling that. So the method that we'll call is actually logout, doesn't receive any parameters, and will just basically destroy the session of the server. This is important so you can manage the amount of load that you're putting on the server. Uh, once the user logs out from your application, you should uh, finish the session on the server so that way you don't have session ha sessions in the Jasper report server that are uh, being kept alive for the timeout that you have set and the user is no longer using your application because it has, log uh, it has been logged out. With this, we finish this video regarding loading the library and authentication with Visualize.js. I recommend you to check the documentation, which is available in the jaspersoft.com page, on all the methods and functions that you have to use Visualize.js. Also, we have other tutorials and videos that show you uh, simple uses of the library so you can get started quickly and working with fiddles to see how you can benefit from having the intelligence inside your application with Jasper Server as the backend as your BI on reporting server. Thank you.